take your Bibles this morning and open up to the book of Psalm, chapter 73. I was thinking this week on different seasons of my life, and then I'm thankful for the seasons and the times in my life where God has blessed me to feel His presence, His closeness with me. And there's no place I've ever been where when God's presence is with me, there's not peace and there's not comfort in the midst of that. One of our, my most helpless feelings that I've ever had was whenever Rance was born. He was born in Jessup, and the doctors that night woke us up, and they, see, they were shipping him off to a different hospital in Savannah to place him in the NICU unit. And so they, they left with him, and there we were standing, and, and um, first-time parents not knowing what to do, what to expect, kind of where to go. And uh, my parents were with me, and Miss Leah, Doris's mom, was with us. And Miss Leah said... Um, in the midst of the hubbub of all the chaos of the moment, Miss Leah said, let's just pause and pray. In the midst of all that, that, that moment, that transition and the fear and the hopelessness and the helplessness of not knowing what to do, just to be able to pause and call upon the name of God and to feel His presence with you, it's the only place to go. But I wonder why sometimes I leave that presence. Why I leave the presence of God. I get away from God, and we get away from God, and we get out of the world, and we get so far into the world that we forget how good it is and how much better it is to be walking with the Lord. And when we're walking with the Lord, it is a sweet place of fellowship. It is a good place of rest. It is, it is nurturing to our very souls. And when we're close to God, we think to ourselves, I don't ever want to get away from Him again. And our flesh tends to draw us further and further away at times. And so I pray that today, just the message today is just a reminder of what it's like to be close in fellowship with the Lord. Psalm chapter 73, I'm going to read with you in verse 28. Verse 28 says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. And we'll go back and read Psalm 73 verse 28 again. It says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. That's the particular phrase that's on my heart for us to look at this morning in the services, is that phrase there, but it is good for me to draw near to God. Now we think about that, that verse in a couple different ways, that phrase in a couple different ways. It is good for me, in this sense, it's good for me because in the presence of God, whenever I'm near and I'm close to God, there is that fellowship and that intimacy that you won't gain anywhere else on the face of this earth. So long as we're alive... In this world, there is the tendency to be drawn away, yet there is a place of quiet rest. There's a place of intimate fellowship. There's a place of that still, small voice speaking into our hearts, and that place is near the heart of God. And so it's good for me to draw near to God. It's good for me to draw near to God because that flesh tends to walk away from that presence. That the flesh, our flesh tends to get busy in the course of the week, and we forget how good it is. Or we think that we have to be busy doing these different things, and in the course of doing that, we, um, we lose sight of how good it is to be in the presence of God. Satan wants to isolate us away from that presence, and then to make us feel puffed up like we can handle things, and we can carry things in our own selves, and we can carry those loads, but brethren, you cannot. And whenever you do get out, and out from the presence of God, and you get away from God, and you realize we have struggled. I have been struggling. I am weary. I am tired. I am worn out. I'm, I'm dealing with the struggles of this. It's good for us to remember. It's good for me to draw near to God. We're here in the book of Psalms. Back up to chapter 34. There's a couple of things that Scripture adds to or, or gives correction or instruction for us with drawing near to God. Psalms 34. Look at verse um, 18. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Now I want to begin to look at these verses here in terms of the application. How do we draw near to God? It is good for me to draw near to God. How do I do that? Whenever we look at the life of David and his sin with Bathsheba and his prayer of repentance in Psalm 51, he cries out against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. And he talks about a broken, the sacrifices that God requires of us is a broken heart, a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. That's what he says here in Psalm 34, 18. The Lord 
is nigh unto them. So he's near to those that are of a broken heart and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. Now the two things that's in that particular verse, that, that broken heart is someone who's grieved over the sin that's in their life. That's what that means. That's a, a place of, of sub subjecting ourselves back to the mind of God and to the will of God and recognizing my ways and my walk and the things that I have been doing is what's gotten me away from following and being close and near to the heart of God. And so I have to be broken over that sin. I have to be broken over that that course of walk that I've been doing that's drawn me away or led me away from being close to God and, and have repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, but to have that repentance. We tried to look at that a little bit Wednesday night, what it looks like to have the fruit that's evidence of repentance in our life. One of the fruits that's evidence of repentance is brokenness over the sin that's in our life. Not haughtiness, not pride, not arrogancy. I can handle this in the flesh. That's what we think. Even if we're sad and sorry for the consequences of the sin, we still think, I can handle this, and we keep repeating the same behaviors, making the same mistake, forgetting that it keeps drawing us further and further away from God. It's in a place of brokenness. My sin, David cries out to God, is ever before me. Against you and you only have I done this evil in thy sight. That's a place of real brokenness for a man of God who recognizes the sin that he's been walking in. And then also that broken heart, it says, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. That's a place of humility. Contrition in the spirit is a place of humility for us as a people of God. For us to draw close to God, we must have a measure of brokenness. And we must have contrition in our hearts, humbling ourselves before God. To come before God and to begin to confess, God, here's where I am. That's a place of humility and contrition. Father, here's where I am. I'm so thankful for that parable that Jesus gives about the, the sheep. If you've got 90 and 9 sheep and yet that one has left, the Lord goes after that one because that's the goodness and the love of God demonstrated in going after His one sheep. Whenever we are that one sheep that's been off astray to begin to make that confession, Lord, I've stopped following You. To have that spirit, a place of humility before God, I need You. Humility is not just how we feel, it's the posture that we take before an almighty God that says, I, I am going to stop doing it my own way. I'm going to not carry the burdens on my own. I'm not going to try to make it happen on my own. I'm going to follow you and you only, God. And in that place of humility, the scripture here says, the Lord draws nigh to them. Look at it again with verse, chapter 34, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save us such that be of a contrite spirit. The Lord comes nigh or is nigh to us in those kind of moments. As I was praying through and thinking through this week, it's hard to think about drawing nigh to God without really letting there be some emotional pieces to that. I described that time with, with rants and then Miss Leah asking for prayer and, and us going to God in a time of prayer and the peace that God gives you in a moment. Brother, if you've been in those kind of moments where there's no reason for peace and yet you have peace, you know what it's like to be in the presence of God. Or to feel hopeless or helpless in other situations. Um, but when the presence of God draws close to you and you feel His presence in your heart and you know that you're resting on the bosom of our Lord, you're resting in the heart of our God, the peace that it gives, the closure that it gives, the the rest that it gives is far greater than any words that we could use that would really describe it. It's a place of quiet rest for us. A place of strength for us. It's our pride and our arrogancy that keeps us away from being close to the heart of God. And whenever we do humble ourselves before God, when we're broken over our sins, God draws nigh to us. Go over to Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verse 18. The scripture here reads, The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon Him. We could just pause there and consider that for just a moment. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon Him. How often do we take time to call out for the Lord and ask for His help and His hand and His guidance in situations? Because the scripture says when we call out to the Lord, according to this verse, the Lord is nigh unto those that call out. Whether we're facing whatever kind of decision before with work or a financial decision or a relationship decision or whatever it is, 
if we would call out to the Lord and ask for His hand to guide us in things, the Lord is nigh to them. And in the presence of the Lord, when He's close at hand, that's whenever we're going to begin to hear the direction that He has for us. That's where we're going to begin to hear the peace. The wisdom that God gives us is first pure and then peaceable. And we try to make major decisions without the peace of God because we've not taken the time to draw nigh to God by calling out to Him and asking for His guidance and His wisdom in situations. But it doesn't just stop there in this verse. It says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. That's a huge clarifying statement to add to us calling upon God. We can just talk about it in a worship service for just a moment. Let's take our worship services. We could be singing songs and and praise and worship songs that are absolutely beautiful with the melody and the harmony and the, the instruments and all that kind of stuff, and yet the words not be words of truth. And in so doing, we're not calling out unto the Lord in that kind of moment. Because God seeks those to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if we neglect the truth because of the way that a song sounds, we neglect the truth because of the way the the melody sounds to us or because it's just a popular idea out there, then brethren, we're not calling out to the Lord because the Lord requires us to call out to Him in truth, to worship Him in spirit and truth. But whenever we do take time, it's a blessing when Brother David is leading a song and he says in this particular verse, on this particular stanza, we're going to exchange this word here for a word to correct and make the sound, the song, the words be more established in truth. And that whenever we sing that song, we sing with understanding of the truth of that particular verse. The word says here, the Lord draws nigh to them. We desire for God to be amongst us as a body of believers every time we gather together in fellowship and in worship. Every time we gather together in service. In order for the Lord to be nigh to us, if we disregard His word of truth, if we disregard His order for the services, if we disregard His standards of practice for us as a church, He's not going to draw nigh. We can gather together every Sunday morning and Sunday night and be just as frustrated and just as led away as any other other body of believers if we're not going to do it in the truth of God's Word. But whenever we do, the Lord is, is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. I'm going over these things this morning, brethren, but I pray that you would take time to really meditate on each one of these and consider those over the course of the week because there is no better place to be on the face of this earth than in the presence of the Lord. There is no greater place to be whenever you're dealing with anything than at close to the chest, at the breast, to the comfort, the heart of God Himself. And so we look at those two verses in Psalms 34 and Psalms 145 about It's brokenness over our sin. It's contrition. It's calling upon the name of the Lord in truth. Go with me to the New Testament for a moment. Go to the book of Hebrews. We'll start in chapter 7 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to look together at verse 19. Verse 19 reads, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Let's just pause there and consider that for just a moment. When we talk about drawing nigh to God and we're looking at brokenness and contrition and calling upon the Lord and calling upon Him in truth, we can go through the routine of doing things and that routine is a truthful routine. It's a routine that's established by God's Word. But God uh, has not called us to just follow a routine. We don't come together as a church and read a liturgy and follow just the liturgy alone and expect that to be sufficient in our worship of God. We come together as a church not to follow a routine while routines and practices of the church are very necessary and they're good for us. But we can be acknowledging Jesus by reading a liturgy and quoting the the example prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and yet our hearts be far from God. The worship of God and drawing close to God is not a matter of one intellectual or a matter of a routine of drawing close to Him. Drawing close to God is a matter of the heart of the child of God. Why would I want to draw close to God? Because there is no better place of rest. And it starts out in this verse, the law made nothing perfect. The the old covenant and the keeping of the law and the sacrifices and the the routines of it, that made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did. The better hope is the new covenant that's established in Jesus Christ. He is the the, um, propitiation for our sins. He is the perfect sacrifice for us. And He established for us a better covenant. 
And it goes on that verse and it says, By the which we draw nigh unto God. By what do we draw nigh unto God? By that better covenant. By that better promises made to us in Christ Jesus. By His perfect sacrifice. It's important for us to take time to meditate and to consider the life and the death and the burial and the resurrection and the sufferings that Christ went through and the truth that we have because of Jesus Christ. I don't like Every time I read that passage out of Isaiah, it makes me weep when we consider that every lash that was across his, hap, his back, it was there for our healing and for the forgiveness of our sin. It, it, it hurts my heart to consider and to think about from a natural perspective the pain that Jesus Christ went through for my sin. But it's whenever we do consider the pain that Jesus Christ went through for my sin and for your sin, we realize all the real depth of the hurt that he went through. It was a demonstration of God's love for me and of God's love for you. Brethren, that's the heart that I desire to draw close to. A heart that is so full of love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. A heart that's so full of truth that in the face of all of that cruelty, he could have called down those angels from heaven and have delivered him, yet he was willing to obey and to keep the commandment that God, the work that God sent him into this world to do. Because truth is important to him, because he is the, is the source of truth. But in every, every angle that we look at with Jesus, we see just the manifestation of God's love for us. And it makes me wonder then, why in the flesh do I allow myself to draw away from God? I believe it's because I stopped considering His love. I stop allowing myself to meditate. I get busy in the course of the week and I stop thinking about all that the Lord does for me on a daily basis. So we don't live in the old covenant where I can just go and I can make a sacrifice and have an atonement for, of sin. We live in a new covenant where that sacrifice has occurred. It occurred in Jesus Christ. And He stands and sits at the right hand of the Father at His throne. And he rules and reigns over us in his kingdom. And he calls us to consider. He commands for us to consider and to remember our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And it's because we're not taking time to remember and to consider the sufferings. And to be willing to then walk in the fellowship of his sufferings. And to resist in ourselves against the flesh to the point of blood. That we might be in the fellowship with the Lord. He draws nigh to us as we draw nigh to him that in the midst of any kind of great circumstance, we can feel the power and the presence of the love of God for us when we consider Jesus Christ. I may not be able to, in my mind this morning, con con convey to you exactly what joy it is to draw nigh to God. I trust that all of you as brethren, you've done that. You can consider that on your own because there's been times where you've drawn nigh to God and you feel the power of His love and His presence. But I challenge every one of you this week to consider, to meditate on Jesus Christ, on His birth, on His life, on His death, the cruelty of the cross, His resurrection, where He sits today, how He reigns and rules. He's in our hearts and He's in our minds, He's in our midst. Consider Jesus Christ and feel the power and the blessing and the joy and the peace of the fellowship of the Lord in being in His presence, drawing nigh to God. Go over to chapter 10 of the same book, Hebrews chapter 10. Jesus is our place of hope in drawing close to God. And then in chapter 10, let's look at verse 22. Verse 22 reads, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works. And it goes on there. I'm not finishing the sentence, but it goes on past that. Let us draw near the Lord. Brethren, that's the, that's the command. If you take nothing else from me this morning, take that phrase right there. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Let us draw near unto the Lord. How do we do that? It's impossible to please God without faith. Let us draw near to the Lord with a true heart and full assurance of faith 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I took a bath this morning. I took a shower this morning. I've taken multiple showers throughout the course of this week. Um, each day, multiple showers. Some days when I had a fever and I got um, clammy and sweaty and stuff like that from my fever this past week. Uh, when the fever broke, I'd go get a shower because Dor well, Doris would tell me I stank, so I would go get a shower. <laughs> and you get out of that shower. I love a shower. I love a hot shower. You, know, you wash off with soap and you get out and you feel refreshed. It's a time of cleansing. All that filth of the dirt or the sweat and all that kind of stuff is kind of washed away and you feel revived and refreshed, or at least I do, when I get out of the shower. That's what we're called to in this verse. Is we're, It's a place of washing ourselves from the impurities that we're going to get attacked on. It's going to attach itself to us because we're walking in this world. And in this world there's lies and there's deceptions and there's, there's um, people who are after just their personal gain and there's hurt feelings and there's all these things that come along with over the course of the week us walking in the course of this world. And we need to wash ourselves from those things, get rid of those, purging them out of our life. And as we do that, we're drawing close to God. And the only way that we can do that, wash ourselves, is if we go back to God's Word and we consider Jesus Christ and we remember what He has done for us and we are active and intentional in seeking God out and drawing close to God and God then gives us not just the shower that washes the filth of the flesh, but He gives us a spiritual cleansing that we might feel closer and closer to His very heart itself. He draws us closer in. Brother, pursue God is my prayer for you this week. Pursue Him in such a way that, that you desire to, to be like John, the, John as he leaned upon the breast of Jesus Christ. To be in that kind of place of intimacy with God to where you're leaning upon Him, and for Him to move means that you have to move as well. For Him to shift, you've shifted with Him. Not to be so far disconnected that when the Lord moves, I'm still in my own place and deciding how I want to move. But to be leaning upon the Lord, to draw so close to Him that we're leaning upon Him, and we're resting in faith that He's going to guide us in the right direction, so that as He moves, we also move with Him. I believe that's a picture of faith. As John leans upon the, the breast of Jesus Christ at that Last Supper. It's a picture that other people saw of how much John loved Jesus. <coughs> Jesus makes that, that statement about how much he loved John. But those are just words that describe the intimacy of the fellowship that exists whenever we draw nigh to God and God draws nigh to us. I can't find the words for us this morning to really use it, but... The best moment of love that I've ever experienced, whenever it's with God, it's even better. The juiciest of fruit that we can imagine here in this world, when it's drawn close to God, the juiciest fruit that we can imagine in this world is dry compared to that. Words can't capture the beauty and the goodness of what it feels like to draw close to God and Him to draw close to you and us be in the presence and leaning on the chest of Jesus Christ. But none of us would be... A, I'm remiss of any words. None of us are without the words to describe what it's like to be out here away from God and experience the hardship and the struggle and the pain of trying to do a relationship or trying to manage finances or trying to find a job or trying to do all of these things without the presence of God with us. Those words do not fail us because all of us experience that on far too regular of a basis. And I think perhaps one of the reasons those words escape us when we talk about drawing close to God is because there are no words, human words, that really describes what it's like to lean upon the chest of Jesus. Draw nigh to God. Let's go to, let's go to one more verse that says, let's go over to the book of James. I'm sure you've heard it out of this particular passage. James chapter 4. Look at verse 8 with me. James chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Draw nigh to God... And he will draw nigh to you. Now that's a promise that God makes right there in that part of the verse. Draw nigh to God. And the promise on the, attached to that is that he will draw nigh to you. We saw that in the book of Psalms. He draws nigh to those that are of a broken and contrite spirit. But I'm thankful for that promise that God gives right there. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Then the verse goes on and says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. And so it points back to the verses in Hebrews we talked about, about purifying ourselves, walking in the truth. 
But the instruction there is draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. The warning that I want to give out of that, that it gives here in the book of, of James as well. If we do not draw nigh to God, brethren, the warning is that we are drawing nigh to Satan. Satan's whole goal in, in being a part of our life is not just to draw us away from God, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. To destroy your testimony as a Christian. To destroy your marriage as a husband and wife. To destroy your family and your parenting with your kids. To rob you of any measure of peace and joy that you've had in your life. To steal all of that away from you. And to destroy your life that he might have joy and delight in the calamity of one of God's people. And when we are not active in drawing close to God and doing the things that God's word says, being broken over the sin, having contrition in our hearts, washing ourselves, worshiping in truth and considering him in truth, confessing and calling out on him in truth. When we're not doing those things, it's not a gray area in there for us, brethren. It's a, it's a black and white dichotomy between I'm drawing not a God or I'm drawing not a Satan. Raise your hand. If you want to draw nigh to Satan this week. None of us do. That's not what we want. Because we know that the goal of Satan is to destroy your life. But are you willing to put forth the effort? Are you willing to do what's necessary according to God's word? To lay aside what I think is right in my own eyes. Some traditions. My habits. The busyness of the week. And to pause in the midst of a moment and say... I'm going to pause and just go to God in prayer. I'm going to consider the stripes across Jesus' back and what those stripes mean for me. I'm going to consider that the Lord sits at the right hand of the throne of God and why He sits there and why He's there to this point. I'm going to consider that I'm commanded by God to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. If we would consider these things in that place of brokenness in our hearts and trusting God and walking in faith, we're drawing nigh to God and the promise that God makes to us, brethren, is not that we'll be cast out to Satan, but if we draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. <clears throat> and so I pray, Father, brethren, in the week ahead that each of us would consider Jesus Christ, these few verses that I've tried to look at this morning, and that you would make it a commitment in your mind and your heart I'm going to word it two different ways for us in closing. The first one is that you would consider it in your mind and your heart the importance of drawing nigh to God. But the word picture that we see out of John, of John is that you would consider leaning so heavily upon the breast of Jesus Christ this week that whenever he moves, you have to move too. You feel the shift. And as you feel that shift, you desire nothing more than to be a part of that closeness with God and so you shift with him. That's the place of a good Christian. It's to follow Jesus in all things and to not deviate from Him. So may the grace of our Lord help us draw nigh to God um, in this week ahead is my prayer for Christ's sake.